officially go time. Time for this webinar. It's time to find out where is the real estate inventory. I'm going to tell you that it's a lot better than it was uh, about a month ago. About a month ago, we were looking down a record low inventory. Uh, right now, it's come back. Well, in New York, because we have New York State MLS, it's come back 50%. Uh, it's still 50% uh, below what um, what it was, you know, when it when it's normally or at its high. Um, but it's come back quite a bit. So we normally in the country we normally have two million, 2.2 million homes for sale in the whole country. At the worst point, about three months ago. We were down below a million homes for sale. There was, there was nothing to buy. Interest rates were still low. Three months later, what a difference three months have made. Now, interest rates are higher and people are maybe panicking that they might have missed the hype. And this is a great time for you guys to get listings. I mean, if you want, if you want to find listings, this is go time right here because you want everybody to get in. People are worried that there's gonna be a crash. So they wanna list now. They have that fear of missing out the FOMO. So in order to get those listings, where are you gonna find them? All right, so that's where we're gonna get started. We're gonna say, where is the listing inventory? Where are we gonna find it? Uh, we need to find those off-market properties. Uh, those off-market properties are where we're going to be able to sign up listings and we need to know where to look for those. And I have a list here. I have um, a list of open listings. We can find our listings there. We can find them in for sale by owners. We find them at foreclosures, downsizers, people who downsize, Airbnbs, nursing homes, moving companies, rentals, rental complexes, which is different than rentals, old expired listings, estate and divorce attorneys, and small builders. So those are the, the uh, things that we're going to go over today. We're going to go over those 12 places to find listing inventory. We're going to start with open listings. Open listings uh, are very exciting for me because um, a, a few months ago, we started allowing open listing advertisements on both New York State MLS and my state MLS. New York State, they know what, they know what opens are in New York City. They use them all the time. It's a, the oldest trick in the way to get started in real estate in New York City is to become a rental agent. And you might say, well, I don't want to be a rental agent. I'd rather chew off my arm than do rentals. No, that's just how they start. That's just how they're building their business. In New York City, many more people rent than buy. There's there's a ton of rentals there. There's high-rise buildings with thousands of rental units in them. And those high-rise buildings uh, have so many rentals to fill all the time that the property managers can't do it themselves. So what they do is they allow the real estate agents to list the units as open rental properties. Those open rental properties that you're allowed to list are now your lead gen way of getting leads and listings. You're going to do that like crazy. You might say, I don't live in New York City, Dawn. I live in a place where there's not a lot of high rise buildings, where there aren't 2000 units to rent in a building. Works everywhere. Okay. Um, I had somebody do this in rural upstate New York, a place where there was no rental listings and they wanted to do, uh, start their business. And they used to own a retail store. They started their business by approaching uh, landowners and builders and saying, can I list your property as an open listing? Now, what does that mean? An open listing is not an exclusive right to sell. If that property sells, you're not guaranteed to get paid. Why would you want to do it? Because if you bring the buyer, you are guaranteed to get paid because you're going to have an open listing agreement that says that you get paid if you bring the buyer. Now, yes, exclusive right to sell. They're great. Everybody wants them. How hard are they to get? Very hard. So this guy was just starting off his business in rural upstate New York. He went to all these different people who owned land and they wanted to build property on that land. And he said to them, 
let me put my sign on your property. You don't have to pay me unless I bring you the buyer. I'll do all the advertising. I'll spend all the money. He did. It took him maybe a couple months and he started driving around town. His signs were everywhere. Signs all over the place. He looked like the biggest listing agent. Meanwhile, they were all opens. You didn't find them maybe on the MLS, but you did find them uh, in advertisements in the newspaper and, and online and on his Facebook page. And as he started servicing those open listings, they became exclusive right to sell. He became able to convert those open listings into exclusive right to sell. And as he started growing his open rentals, he became well known by putting his sign everywhere, by putting his advertising everywhere. He looked like the biggest rental agent in the area. Nobody had any idea that they weren't exclusive right to sell listings and they didn't have to be exclusive right to sell listings. So this works whether you're in rural, nowheresville, or whether you're in the biggest metropolis that there is or in the suburbs in between. Open listings can be found in any new construction, any land, any homeowner that wasn't able to sell their house themselves as a for sale by owner, you wanna get an open listing out of that? Go through all the for sale by owners. If you can't get them to give you an exclusive right to sell, say, give me a give me two week open listing. You don't have to pay me unless I bring you the buyer and then negotiate what that buyer commission will be. But what that let you do is that lets you advertise that listing. Now you can put that listing in my state MLS or New York state MLS, whichever state you're, if you're in anywhere else in the country outside of New York, you use my state MLS and you advertise that open listing. And we put that listing on our public pages, which are heavily trafficked. We also syndicate them. Certain sites will take them. Zillow, Realtor.com, they do not take open listings. But there are other sites that we syndicate to, um, several that will take them and take those open listings and give you leads back. Now, many people have heard me talk about one of our members who had a challenge to get 300, 200 listings in 30 days. She actually ended up getting close to 400 listings in 30 days and a little over 30 days, she got over 400 listings. How did she do it? She went to all new construction. She went to, new const she went to every new construction uh, in a three county area. And she asked them, she said, you've got 600 units that you wanna sell pre-construction. Let me list them as open listings. Now, these new construction condo communities, they let you do that anyway. They actually have all the photos and descriptions and floor plans and everything. They actually give it to you in a, in a Dropbox file usually, where you can then create an advertisement, bring them a buyer and they pay you commission. So this um, agent who did the 400 open listings, uh, she started that three months ago. She sold over $3 million worth so far of those open listings. Now, some of them are new construction, but some of them she gets paid up front on the contract. So she's already been paid on some of those open listings. So it works, it works for rentals. And you might say, well, I don't want to do rentals. Why? I don't understand it. Rentals are a great way to get into this business because while you're doing rentals, you're advertising rentals, who wants to rent? People who need to downsize, people who have a house to sell want to rent. So if you can advertise rentals and get calls from those rentals, then you say to them, well, where are you coming from? Well, I got to sell my house and getting divorced. Oh, do you have anyone to represent your home? Do you have anybody who is going to list your home for sale? No, I haven't done that yet. I'm looking to find a place first because I want to make sure I got some place to go before I sell my house. Oh, let me come over. I'll take a look at it for you. And boom, you go over there, you get the listing. So why somebody wouldn't want rentals, I have no idea. You get paid on the rental and you usually can get a listing out of it. And a lot of times those renters, they can't find a house. They wanted to buy a house. They've been wanting to buy a house. Now you've picked up a buyer client too. So never ever turn down a rental or look your nose down at a rental because I know many, many people who have grown the largest business possible 
using the rental model. It's a great model. So don't ever overlook rentals. Rentals are a great way to advertise your business. Now I'm still on these open listings, okay? So we're gonna put our open listings into My State MLS. I'm just gonna bring over the My State MLS window here. And when you um, put open listings in, you just do the exact same thing. You have to opt into open listings. There is an extra charge for it because there's a lot more effort on our part to keep junk out of our database. But when you want to create an open listing ad, you just go to add new listings and create open listing ad after you have opted into it. When I say junk on open listings, this is the get, this is the danger with open listings. And a lot of uh, MLSs don't allow them for this reason. They don't have strict rules surrounding open listings. So people just list anything, things that they don't have permission to list. You can't do that in my state MLS. You have to have a listing agreement that an open listing agreement, but we do have that available on my state MLS in the resources and forms. So you would go to accounts, resources and forms. And you would scroll down to uh, the contract area and you would click on the open listing agreement. You would get this open listing agreement filled out, signed by the property owner, because you will need proof uh, and also to get paid. This kind of guarantees that you get paid when you bring a buyer and when you affect the sale. So that protects you as well. Um, we expire open listings every 30 days. Every 30 days, open listings will expire in my state MLS. And that's because we don't want junk. I mean, you're going to put in an open listing and if you don't keep it updated, it's going to turn into internet trash. My state MLS does not want internet trash. We don't like internet trash. So what we do is we expire that open listing in 30 days. Now, if you want to turn that open listing into an exclusive right to sell listing, then you go get an exclusive right to sell contract and then you can turn it over. But an open listing, absolutely fabulous way to um, get inventory and to start your business, kickstart your business and to find listings that you haven't found anywhere else. So let's say you're a buyer's agent. And as a buyer's agent, you um, can't find anything for your buyer. Now what are you gonna do? Go out and try to find an open listing, right? Let's say your, your buyer wants to buy in a certain neighborhood and you're knocking on all the doors because you're a door knocker. Door knocker is a big thing in the real estate industry. They like to door knock. I've got a buyer who wants to buy something in this neighborhood. I'm not wanting to sell. I'm not wanting to sell. I'm not wanting to sell. You're getting the door slammed in your face. But then you get somebody who goes, oh, I'm thinking about selling, but I'm not ready yet. Oh, you're not? What if I could bring you the highest price? And eh, I'm not signing your contract. But what if I could bring you the highest price? I'm not signing your contract. But if you brought me a highest price, I would consider it. Oh, will you allow me to do it as an open listing? What's an open listing? An open listing is you just pay me if I bring a buyer and you like what the buyer offers you, then I get paid out of that deal. All right, I'm willing to do that. No obligation to me. I can sell it on my own. I can hire somebody else. That makes it a lot easier to get the deal. And then once you have that relationship, you've opened that door, you can turn that into an exclusive right to sell listing. So that's what we do with open listings. And there's, there's a lot of inventory in open listings. So before I move on from open listings and move over to the FISBOs, we have a lot of people on this webinar. I want to know, before I move on from opens, what questions you have about open listings. So let me look at some of these questions here um, and see if anybody has any questions on open listings. Somebody is saying the sound is garbled. Is everyone having garbled sound? Because a lot of people are saying the audio sounds fine. Uh, that may be your internet connection if you're having issues with your sound. Sound is good. I can hear fine. Great. Okay, great. And if there's no questions on open listings, I'm going to move over to the FISBOs. There's one question. Oh, there is. All right, let's see. Uh, Stefan, our engineer here, has told me that there is a question. Are there state-specific um, contracts, does New York allow open listing contracts? Oh, you know what? A lot of people ask this. 
Are open listings legal in my state? Yes, open listings are legal in your state, and I'm going to tell you why. A lot of people confuse open listings for net listings. Many states' net listings are not legal. But open listings are legal. An open listing doesn't mean that you don't sign an agency disclosure, okay? I think what people are worried about is, well, the state says that I have to sign an agency disclosure and, and say how I'm going to represent a client. Am I going to represent them as a buyer's agent and I'm going to rep them as, represent them as a broker's agent or am I going to represent them as a listing agent? You can get a broker's uh, disclosure signed and all that does is tell the property owner what your role in this transaction will be so that the property owner knows, are you representing me? Are you representing the, the buyer that you bring? Is it dual agency? Are you representing both of us? Are you, or if your state doesn't allow dual agency, are you a transaction broker? Those things still need to be done. That's state law. You still have to have um, an agency agreement or an agency relationship it doesn't mean you have to represent them to bring them a buyer, but you do have to let them know who you represent. And you do have to have that in writing. But that's not has nothing to do with whether or not you're going to have an open listing. An open listing just says that if I bring you the buyer, you'll pay me. You're not obligated to me. You're not obligated to take my deal. You're not obligated to pay me if somebody else sells it. That's what an open listing is. Broker representation and open listings are two separate things. And a lot of people confuse them. So please don't confuse broker representation or where you stand, if you're gonna represent the buyer or the seller, with what an open listing is. An open listing is just um, what the seller owes you if you bring the buyer and they accept the deal. That's all an open listing is. So that, that's what, how that works. Um, someone is asking, if you get an open listing and the date is more than 30 days, can we automatically renew on my state MLS? Yes, but you have to touch the listing. The listing will not expire if you touch it. So the listing will only expire if you put it in and forget about it. That's what makes it internet trash. But if every 10 days, every 15 days, you update that listing with a new picture or a new comment or a new price, or, um, or you just refresh something on the listing, that will update our timestamp, that will extend your listing for an additional 30 days. So that's how you do that. Um, people are saying, so we can get paid as a buyer's agent on an open listing. As long as you let the seller know that you're representing the buyer in a disclosure and they're totally okay with that, then um, yes, of course. The whole thing about state law and your license law and disclosure is that you're upfront with all the parties of the transaction and that everyone in the transaction knows who you work for. So if the homeowner knows that you represent the buyer and you don't represent them and you've signed a disclosure with them saying so, you're fine. You're good. Keep it on record. Um, we also have digital documents inside uh, my state and New York State MLS. And if you can opt into those and get a digital signature, e-signature with all your dis disclosures and all your contracts, and you can keep them on file inside your digital documents. Uh, so if you didn't know you could do that in my state MLS, you go up to um, the account tab and look for access digital documents and you can opt into that. And it is additional uh, cost to your membership. And why my state MLS does that is because we don't want to charge everybody if everybody doesn't need it. So we don't raise our price to accommodate um, things that people don't need, but uh, do we try to keep our prices low? We keep, we have no fines, we, but if you want an additional service, then we try to offer that as, as affordably as possible. Someone's asking what happens if a buyer already has a realtor? Well, if there's a realtor um, relationship between any client and you're a realtor, you can't get involved. That's, that's, the, that's the code of ethics, guys. Um, there is no way to get between somebody's relationship unless that client is ready to or is firing their current realtor. 
and you can't get involved in that process. But let's say they say to you, oh, my contract's up next week. Um, I've not been happy with my service. Um, I'm going to let them go and then I'm going to use you. Then you can do it. That's fine. That's not getting involved in the process. Uh, you know, if, especially if they're not satisfied. Uh, if we get paid as a buyer's agent, uh, so you can get paid as a buyer's agent on an open listing. Sure, that's how a lot of these for sale by owner um, listings work. So a lot of people, they go on these flat fee brokers or limited service listings. Those are really open listings. And as if you have a buyer, you're, you're used to seeing those in the MLS. You see them in the MLS and you bring the buyer to them and you're typically offered your whatever commission is offered on that listing or whatever you negotiate. So of course you can get uh, paid as a buyer's agent on an open listing. And that happens all the time, all day long. During those limited service listings, you probably didn't even realize that that was what was happening, but that is what was happening. Um, somebody's asking, can I advertise and a buyer wants to purchase, um, how do I handle it? Well, that's generally what is gonna happen. So this is for Tom. Tom wants to know, um, I get an open listing and I advertise it and the buyer comes to me and the buyer wants to purchase it. Great, that's exactly what you're having happen. And that's exactly what our member had happen. She got a call on one of her advertisements for the open. Um, it was a buyer. She brought the buyer to the seller. She already had her agreement in place and uh, they accepted the deal. She did all the paperwork and the contracts and all of that. So yeah, she's getting paid on it. <clears throat> so that definitely is how you do it. Um, so that, that's totally possible, totally um, happens all the time. And those, so this open listings, I just kind of segued right into for sale by owners, which are those limited service listings. You can find them on the MLS. You can find them on Zillow. You can find them on Redfin has them now. And they say for sale by owner right on them. You can sort by for sale by owner. What you want to do with those is contact each one. Those you may want to do a handwritten letter. You may want to uh, find their phone number. How are you going to do that? Because a lot of times you can't find the phone number. Fast people search. I shouldn't probably be showing everybody this, but that's why you come to the webinar, right? All right, let's go fast people search. Everybody write this guy down. Dot com. Hopefully I spelled it right. If I did, yep, that's it. You put in the uh, name, you put in the city and state, you hit the free search, you'll get the phone number. That's how you, now if you got to check the do not call list, guys, if someone's on a do not call list, do not call them. So check that do not call list first and just Google do not call list for my state. That, that's how you're going to do that. If it's a do not call, you can write them a letter. Um, you know, don't put the letter in their mailbox, put a stamp on it and mail it. That's the way to go. Um, with the FISBO, sometimes you can knock on their door because they have a for sale sign on the lawn, maybe like a for sale by owner sign on the lawn. You can knock on their door and say, hey, yeah, I'm representing a buyer. Can I bring that buyer to your listing? And then after you make a relationship with them, try to get their listing. When it's a for sale by owner, when it's a limited service listing, those are the easiest to convert to exclusive right to sell because the homeowners find out what a pain in the butt it is to actually do this to set up all the showings, to do the advertising, to do the paperwork, to get the lawyer, to get all of the inspections and to get all this done. And then they make a deal and then the deal falls through and they got to do it again. And they realize, oh, that's why the realtors get paid. Of course, because our job isn't that easy. Everyone thinks it's easy. It looks easy. Oh my God, they did nothing. They got a huge check. That's not how what happens here, guys. You know it. You're working all day long with buyers and sellers and inspections and uh, repairs and clean outs and moving and um, closings, lawyers, contracts, two parties that are getting divorced and don't talk to each other. You know that this is hard, right? Well, the FISBOs who thought it was so easy are finding out how hard it is. You got to let them know all of the work that you do. You've got you to show them your worth, guys. That's how we do it. Um, so now I've covered open listings. I've covered for sale by owners. Does anybody have any, um, how do I get for sale by owners? Oh, Tom, Tom's still asking one more question. He means if a buyer has his own agent, 
and you have the open listing, well, that's tricky. That's when you go to the seller and ask for a, a small, limited, exclusive right to sell. And we actually have the limited, exclusive right to sell paperwork in my state, in New York State MLS, and you let them know that you're going to bring somebody and that, that that person might be represented by their own buyer. Uh, may I do like, just for this transaction, a limited exclusive right to sell. Um, and then you can get, now you're representing the seller or you're as a, a broker transaction agent, either way, but then you could co-broke with a buyer's agent. Is that what you're asking, Tom? I think that is what you're asking. Uh, Michelle is actually giving us some advice. So I like this. Michelle is saying, dropping off a kit on how to sell your home on your own is helpful or offer free service such as CMA or marketing that can help them. And that'll help you land uh, the deal. So Michelle, I really appreciate that. You'd be great for our mastermind series. We're going to start a mastermind series here where we get people who, where we all start helping each other because that that's, uh, that's what we do here. We are, we're, we're a, we're a support, we're a team. Tom is asking me, uh, again, on the percentage of that you would charge, that's up to you, whatever deal you can make. I can't tell you what deal you can make, but you need to make that deal. Um, so you can, you, you can negotiate your own percentage there. I'm gonna move over to foreclosures. Now, this is important. Everyone is paying attention to me. On your computer, open up a Google Chrome window and go to YouTube, youtube.com. And you can put in slash go home TV, or you can search the words, all one word, go home TV. And that is our channel. And I'm bringing you here for a reason, because there is something on this channel I want you all to see. And it's how to get foreclosures, because you all want to know this. Right? You all want to know where the foreclosure inventory is? So go to our Go Home TV YouTube channel, click subscribe, and then look at the whole channel, open up the channel, look at the videos, and scroll down to the video called How to Buy Real Estate at Auction, Episode 1. Inside that, when we're done with this, you got to watch that video. That video will show you where the foreclosures are how to approach the foreclosures, how to get the foreclosures, how to sign them up as, as listings, or how to buy them at the auction. So that is a very important video for you. If you're really looking to become a foreclosure broker or you feel like foreclosures might be coming, that is the video for you guys. It's called How to Buy Real Estate at Auction. And on YouTube, uh, make sure you subscribe to that and watch that video after this, not while you're here. We're gonna watch that one later. You can also watch uh, while you're there our 3 million in sales in three months with open listings video. That will go in depth in where you can find those open listings, how you can do it, how you get paid, all of that. And then uh, we just actually put out our newest video of what we think is gonna happen with the real estate market because I interviewed uh, a man named Ken Johnson from FAU and he's a data scientist. They do extensive research on this unbelievable research and he tells you exactly what he thinks is going to happen in some markets and in others. Some markets are going to tank, some aren't. So you got to watch that to find out which ones are going to be good and which ones aren't. So that is uh, the foreclosure story. But on foreclosures, this is easy. Go to auction.com. Look wherever it is you sell. Everything that's there, that auction, those people are in foreclosure most of them. Click on each one, approach each one, write each one a letter, call. A lot of times there's going to be some kind of issue that happened, life issue, death, divorce, something, job loss, illness. You have to be compassionate to these people. Um, that's always the best way. Try to get them out of the house with some money in their pocket before the foreclosure. Help them out. Do your job. Your job is to help people. If your job is to help them get out of a house, help somebody else get into that house, make sure that these people 
get the most money possible for their house and that they don't just don't lose their house to foreclosure and, and give up all their equity. So what do you do? You got to go do a CMA. A CMA is a comparative market analysis. Find out how much that house is worth. Go with it in hand to them and say, listen, you know, you're going into foreclosure for 200,000. I get you five for this thing quick, you know, pay off your loan. I'll get it all uh, set for you through the title company. You walk away with 300,000. Don't give it up. Don't. I've seen people walk away from their equity because they didn't know they had it. They had no idea. You have to tell them. So you want to do that again on youtube.com slash go home TV. Um, there is a way to do a CMA. I'm going to show you that video. And we did that one fairly recently. It's how to use pro search to do a full appraisal, a comparative market analysis so that, um, you know, you could learn, uh, how to do appraisals. I actually teach you how to do an appraisal right here. It's called webinar using professional search on my state MLS. That video will go in depth. That video will tell you, how, and I'm an appraiser. Uh, I started off as an appraiser in, uh, in 2000 and I've, I'm still an appraiser to this day. Um, and I'm licensed as a broker in New York and Florida, licensed appraiser. So I show you exactly how to use professional search, which is inside my state MLS, how to do a CMA. And that, that is exactly uh, how you've got to, um, you've got to handle the foreclosure situation. Help people out. Next, downsizers. What's a downsizer? Well, a lot of people aren't downsizing now. You might've heard this. I actually saw an article this morning. Nobody's downsizing. The, the boomers are staying in their home. They're aging in place. But some people have to downsize. They go to a nursing home. They go to assisted living. They get sick. They have to go live with their kids. Someone takes care of them. Where do you find that downsizer inventory? Well, here's where I talk about how to schmooze people. You go to these assisted living facilities where you can pay like five grand a month and you get your room and all your food and all your entertainment and they take care of you and then you pay a little extra and the nurse comes and gives you your medicine. The intake people there, the sales people there are usually the first line of defense. So what you want to do is you want to visit all these. Bring gifts. I'm not even kidding. Um, you might want to bring some real estate swag to put in the bathrooms there. In the, in the public bathrooms, like, I don't know, baskets of toothbrush with your name and phone number on them. Maybe you want to offer to help get people um, moved by setting them up concierge, get them their moving company, get them, you know, all their stuff sold off, get their house cleaned out. And oh, by the way, while you're there, let me give you a, a comparative market analysis and uh, let me see if I can sell your home for you. So that is a great way to go about it. I would visit every single assisted living, nursing home, and just adult living facility. I would make friends with the intake person. I would uh, find out what I could do for them and um, figure out how they can refer you. Another way to get downsizers is to build a web landing page. You might say, I don't know, I'm number 20. How am I going to build a web landing page? How do I do that? Well, there are several web landing page companies out there um, that you can use. Unbounce is one of them, but you can actually email me, Dawn, what's a web landing page company? And I'll send you some examples of web landing page company. Or uh, you can comment, if you're watching the replay on this, you can comment below and say, um, Dawn, what are some of these web landing page companies? Make a web landing page that says, that you are going to help people downsize, that you are going to get them moved, that you're going to get their stuff sold for them, get the highest price for them. Um, use a lot of keywords. Keywords are very important. And those are just words that you put on the page that describe exactly what you want to do. Be helpful. That is an excellent way to get listings. You need to find people who need to get out of their house and their house is full of stuff, 50 years worth of stuff. How are they going to get rid of it? It's too overwhelming. I'm not doing it. I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. Forget it. So be the person who solves the problem for them and you're getting the listing. That's just another way to go about it. So that's our, our first 
bit is open listings, FISBOs, foreclosures, and downsizers. Any question on any of that? Ooh, they got questions. I'm going to give you landing page uh, companies, and we're going to put them in the comments. Uh, I know, Len, if you could let everybody know with an answer that they could use Unbounce. They could use Hootsuite. They can go to their own web. Uh, we can build you a website. If you want, contact us. We'll build you a website. Um, and we can put landing pages on there for you. So that's a really great way to go about it. You can also get landing pages from MailChimp and these different email marketing services. We'll, we'll put some examples of that and email them uh, to you guys in the webinar comments here. Um, so if Len, Len, who's on our, our staff, if she would do that for us, that would be great. Um, people are asking, um, are you offering mentoring shadowing for those who want to become appraisers? They know several agents that would like this. Well, I know several appraisers that would like that. Appraisers are so busy. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, you want to know how I became an appraiser? It's a good story. I was, <clears throat> I was working at a tech company in, um, in two, 2000, 2020, 2020. No, 2000, no, the year 2000. Boy, time's flying for me, guys. Uh, in the year 2000, I was working at a tech company. And the tech company was, was getting rounds of venture capital funding. And, and then that stopped. So I knew I needed to find another career. And I had just come off DJing. I was a DJ for 12 years before that. I DJed weddings and parties. I didn't want to go back to that because I was always broke as a DJ. You know, just FYI, you're broke as a DJ, just so you know. Don't, don't go that way. But it was fun, super fun for if you're in your 20s. But anyway, I want to start buying property. And uh, my husband and I, he was very, very handy. We started looking for multi multifamilies to buy and some mixed use properties. And I looked at a mixed use um, mail property. It was like, it was like a, a postal service with like a two family house attached to it. And the real estate broker said to me, oh, but it won't appraise. And I didn't know what that means. Like, what do you mean it won't appraise? Like, that means I can't get a loan on it? What, what are you trying to say? And she didn't explain it any more than it won't appraise. And I'm like, well, what do I do? So I went to an appraiser's office and I walked in there and I said, I want to buy this post office, but the broker said it won't appraise. And the, the appraiser, first thing he said, everything appraises. And I was like, oh, good. Um, how does everything appraise? And he said, well, I would show you, but my computer's broken. So I'm a techie geek. I fixed his computer. And he taught me how to be an appraiser. But it was that simple. I walked into his office. I said, do you need help? Will you teach me how to be an appraiser? They're also buried right now. It's not even funny. And if you have real estate experience and you know how to pull comps and you know how to use the MLS and you've already made CMAs, they will love you. They need help like you don't know. And the appraiser um, community has shrunk more than in half um, in the last 20 years. And so that's why... All of you who are doing deals know you can't get your appraisals fast enough because there aren't enough of them and they're charging through the roof for appraisals. So every single one of you that wants to become an appraiser, I recommend you call the local appraisers in your area and ask them if you could apprentice for them. You can do the class, all the classes online. The classes are super easy. And a lot of times those classes work for your CE, for your real estate license. So I do that. I take... Uh, appraisal classes for CE that are also good for my broker's license. So the end of the fits the bill. Um, so that, that's how you can become an appraiser. Um, let's see, what are people asking me here? Um, web landing pages. Okay, Lynn's going to help you out with that. Um, oh, someone's asking me if I'm doing, if I specifically am doing apprenticeships um, as an appraiser. Um, Patrice, where are you located? Maybe. Are you are you in Florida or New York? Or neither? I need to know where you're located. <laughs> and uh, we can talk after. You can always send, us, send me a private message if you were looking for that. All right. Uh, so I went over open listings, FISBOs, foreclosures, and downsizers, and also how to become an appraiser. And I'm going to go on to the next one. This one I love. Airbnb. Oh, a 
by the way, wait, Patrice, she's in New York. If you're in and around the Kingston area of New York, I know somebody who would take um, apprentices, um, the guy who trained me. Um, so send me an email and I'll send you his information. Airbnbs. Um, that is the way to go. I've got to tell you, um, people who own Airbnbs, who bought them when the market was low and were renting them and holding them and found out what a pain in the neck it is to run an Airbnb and how when it's empty, you're making nothing, but you're still paying all the utilities. And the market's high right now. Market, market might drop soon. Now is the time to contact every single Airbnb, home away, uh, vacation rental owner in your area and say, do you want to sell your home? I have a buyer for it. And you probably do have a buyer for it, but even if you didn't, they want to sell their home, you'll advertise it, you'll get a buyer for it. So do it that way. Airbnb, so now I want to go on, how would you do that? Because you know, when you go to Airbnb, they don't give you the address. You gotta kind of guess where is this property? You gotta, you gotta dig a little bit and do some research. So here I am on Airbnb and I'm looking at um, this area here, which is in, in Juneau Beach, Florida. It just happened to be a random map I had up. And you're gonna have to log in and, and find Airbnbs. Look for condos, look for single families. Um, when, you, when you see them and you contact them, you click on each one, um, it's not going to show you the address. But if you can zoom in close enough on the map, then you can sort of guess or you could email them and say, um, what's the location of this property? Um, you can also find out if you are contacting the homeowner themselves through Airbnb. Don't, don't just willy nilly contact somebody through Airbnb because it could be a property manager or broker or somebody who's going to block your communication. You don't want that to happen, but send a message. Say, am I, am I speaking with the homeowner here? Um, what's the address of this? Is this, you know, even offer to, to run the property for them. Let me tell you, I, I have a very good friend of mine who does property management of these Airbnbs and that's where she gets all her inventory. She gets all of her listings that way because investors buy and sell property all the time. So she starts representing them as a property manager. So she gets paid all along. She gets paid as a property manager. She gets paid, um, you know, to get their places rented. And then when they sell, she's, she's the listing agent. Uh, when they buy, she's the buyer's agent. Makes a fortune doing it. And everyone turns their nose up at these rentals and these vacation property um, uh, representation. Don't do that. Uh, if you're really serious and you want to make money in this business, then you have to get creative. And, and, a, and a good way to be creative is to um, become a property manager and start representing people who own lots of property. And you make a lot of money from those people who own lots of property. I want to talk about uh, nursing homes, which I sort of already mentioned in the downsizer. I kind of, you know, um, gave you a preview there. But yes, I would definitely go to nursing homes, again, assisted living facilities and all of these places, because the people who come there and are sick, their families are overwhelmed with making sure that their loved one is cared for. The last thing they want to think about is, oh my God, I got to get my parent into this facility and their house is, she's a hoarder and it's full of stuff. And then I have to get it cleaned out because I got to sell it to pay for the nursing home or to pay for the assisted living. That's a great place to get listings. Um, and you're doing a huge service to the community. Because if you think about how overwhelming it must be for people who need to, all of a sudden they fell and they were, they were healthy all along, they fell and now they're hurt and their house is full of stuff and, it, how, and their kids may live in another state how overwhelming that must be. And so you need to become helpful to people like that. And you'll be rewarded with the listings and you'll get paid along the way. You, you get paid for doing the cleanouts on the houses. You get, get paid for maybe being a concierge to help them um, hire a moving company, hire an auctioneer company, hire a clean out company. 
So you can, you can get paid for those items. Uh, and then that transitions me right into moving companies, clean out companies. So don't just make friends with people at the nursing home. Call all the movers. Get them to start recommending you. Maybe give them a referral fee if, if they're licensed and or your state allows that. Make sure that your state allows that. Um, not all states allow that. But, uh, and a lot of them hold licenses, but they don't list property, but they do hold licenses so they can receive the referral. So I would contact every moving company in my area, every clean out company, every downsizing area, every estate lawyer, anybody who deals with anybody um, who has to get out of a house because of a foreclosure or an illness or divorce or some other reason. And then, let me just, before I go on, I've got some questions here. Um, boy, I've got a lot of questions here. Yes. Uh, we are answering most of them. Okay, good. Um, rentals. Again, same as Airbnb, only with long-term rentals. Become a rental property manager. Advertise that. Advertise it on Craigslist. Advertise it um, on Facebook Marketplace. Do you need someone to manage your rental properties? And if you do that, again, you'll have the same result as you did with the Airbnb. The people who own rental properties buy more property. Not all of them have broker's licenses. Not all of them are agents. A lot of them want to hire an agent. Um, I, again, I told you I have a very good friend. She represents about 150 uh, different landlords. And she's always got listings coming and going and coming. And she ends up getting more and more customers every time she lists one of those properties for sale. Now I'm going to go, I've had rentals, but now I've got rental complexes. How is that different? Go over to a place that is an apartment building. Talk to the property manager. You're not going to be their property manager or have a property manager. What do you want to do with those rental complexes? You want to rent their empties. You want to list their empties Try to get exclusive right to sell on their empties. But if you can't, you can get an open listing or a limited exclusive listing. I'm going to explain the difference. I already told you what an open listing was. An open listing, you bring the buyer or the renter and you get paid. A limited exclusive is when the listing is given to more than one agent, but nobody else can sell it. So the homeowner can sell it or the property owner or the property manager, but the limited exclusive uh, is given to, let's say, five different real estate agencies. And those five if agencies have permission to market that property. That's a limited exclusive. And we do those in New York. They're quite common, actually, because, you know, you have 2,000 units to rent. Now, there is um, a rental complex um, nearby here that was brand new. So it's new construction, and you're going to want to look into those new construction rental complexes because what happens with them is they just pay you to help to get the place full. So uh, down the street from me, there's one of those and they pay a full commission um, and they have like a $3,000 a month um, rental. So, so they would pay, um, you know, 1500 bucks just for putting somebody in the unit and they pay any realtor who comes and brings them somebody. So you definitely want to try that. Now we're going to look at, Old expired listings. What are old expired listings? Well, old expired listings are not listings that just expired. Everyone prospects on listings that just expired. Well, what good is that? They already have an agent. They just let it expire. They're probably going to renew with their agent. Don't do that. Look at expireds that expired a year ago, two years ago, five years ago and it hasn't sold yet. And where do you get that information? I'm about to show you. You are gonna get that information in my state MLS's professional search. Now, professional search is a product of realtor.com. It is not realtor.com. We tell everybody this. Professional search is something you can only get as a member of an MLS that contracts with realtor.com for this information. The public does not have any access to this information. But what you want to do with, with professional search 
is once you've found expired listings, and you can find some expired listings in professional search, or you can look in MyStateMLS for expired listings, or you can look anywhere where there might be expired listings, um, even expired FISBOs. And you want to find out who owns that property. Well, I'm just going to click on a random address here. But the best part about um, professional search is that random property was a condo, so without a unit number. So now I'm going to actually put in an address I know of, bring it up. And you can find out information about a property just by pulling it up. Now, what can you find out about this property? You can find out pretty much everything. You can find out the owner's last name. You can find out the mortgage amount. You can find out um, where it was listed before. I want to show you that was actually, this is actually the address. And as you can see, the owner's name is here. The mortgage amount is here. Um, this particular property is uh, has both of those addresses. Sometimes you have to hunt around for the property address. You want to definitely look up properties on professional search. You want to make sure that it hasn't sold since the last time it was listed. So it's going to take some research. It's going to be some digging on your part. But look for those expired listings. If they haven't sold, it's most likely that that homeowner still wants to sell but couldn't get their price at the time. Or maybe wasn't ready to move or couldn't find a place to go. But they're ready now because they're worried that the market's going to drop. You're at the height of the market now. Encourage them to sign an exclusive listing agreement with you. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to use professional search. And again, for more in-depth on professional search, go to our YouTube channel slash Go Home TV and watch the webinar on how to use professional search. Um, estate and divorce attorneys. You've got to start making friends with these people. Um, as an appraiser, they've always hired us. So we knew a lot of these people because they, you know, uh, CPAs, um, they always have people who are getting audited, who need to sell property, who need to get a property appraised. Um, definitely divorce and estate attorneys. So. Find a way to connect with them, make relationships with them, maybe ref do make some type of referral. Uh, if that's legal in your state, make sure you're doing everything that's legal um, and make friends with them. And then finally, I wanna bring up small builders. When I say small builders, are builders that build maybe like 10, 12 houses a year. A lot of times those builders aren't brokers. They just build custom homes. They own land, they subdivide it, they build a custom home. Contact every small builder in your area and find out if they have any inventory coming up. Can you sell it for them? Do they already have an agent? And if they already have an agent, can you bring them a buyer? As an open listing, tell them about open listings. See if you can put your sign on their vacant land. That will get you a lot of business. So those are the places where you can find all the off-market listing inventory. I went, I went over 12 of them. This should give all of you a jump start in, um, in your business and a really great way to get your business pumping. Let me just look at some of the questions here and see if I can answer uh, some of them for anybody. Um, let's see if what we have. Um, people, oh, people like that. Going to the assisted living is a wonderful way of helping people. It so is. You know, the, the help that you're giving people when you do that, it's, it's very helpful. So, all right, I'm gonna wrap this up, but if you have any more questions, I want you to put them in the questions tab for us. We'll continue to answer them. We will put this um, webinar as a replay on our YouTube channel, so be sure to go to youtube.com slash gohometv and subscribe and, get a, and hit the little bell, and you'll get a notice when this webinar is up on uh, Go Home TV, so you could rewatch it or you can share it with friends. Uh, before I go, one more thing. If you do want to share any of this information with friends, if you want to share my state MLS with friends and get paid, we have an affiliate marketing program. Uh, so as a member of my state MLS, you go to your account tab and let's see, let me bring it up. Go to your account tab, click um, 
This will, right now mine says affiliate dashboard program. Yours will say uh, become an affiliate. And there's information about it. You opt into the affiliate program. There's no cost to you to do so. You share your referral link. You get paid automatically and you get paid every month that the person that you referred, who also becomes a member, uh, you get paid every month that they pay. So it is continual residual income in perpetuity that can help you with your retirement. And our MLS, uh, My State MLS, we think of you as we, we're a community and we're a community with you. So we wanted to share our revenue with you. And we know that you like to share our service with your friends. So you want to get paid for that. And we came up with this affiliate program to allow you to do that. Um, someone's asking, should I also join um, a different board of realtors um, or a different MLS that is not my state MLS? I can't tell you that. If you're a broker, um, those are kind of decisions you'll have to make as a business decision. We have many members who are members of multiple MLSs and are realtors. I'm a realtor. And you can join as many MLSs as you want. But we also have people who are only members of my state because that works for them. My state's a great way to make money. So if you have your local MLS and you have to be a part of it because your broker's making you be a part of it, or you need to be a part of it for your local market, my state MLS still work for you, help you make money. That's the most important part. So it's not just what you have to have, it's what you want and what, you, what will grow your business. And my state MLS will help you grow your business, whether you're part of another MLS or not. All right. Um, our YouTube channel is Go Home TV. YouTube.com slash Go Home TV, or just go to YouTube and in the search bar, Go Home TV, all one word. And please subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you again at our next webinar. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming.